Telephone dispatch, numerous lookout, good morning. I started it was more about just you know, living in this space living in this kind of place where you're up on the mountain in the weather in the clouds with the sunrise and the sunset coming so close together in midsummer and then you start to enjoy the work of it Calspell dispatch Toma lookout Good morning. I have 51 degrees RH, 51%. My winds are out of the east at 3. Cloud cover is 20% with some patchy valley fog in the North Fork. Good day. Toma. I think to be a lookout, you really have to love solitary time by yourself. What I love is just living in this little cabin for the summer on top of a mountain. I think there's something about keeping things simple that is absolutely resonant and, and feels good. This is a reminder of, you know, just trying to keep it simple. It's just me and it's just this place and the work of being involved with fire. Nineteen ninety four was my first summer. It was a very busy year. And within I think my second week doing it we had fires. And real quick, that, you know, quiet and simple lifestyle uh shifted into firefighting mode. And you have to transition right away to that timely fashion of getting the information in properly and accurately and then you're supporting the firefighters by taking on many different roles that you hadn't been doing for weeks at a time. It's a changing environment, and your role in it is always changing. Toma Lookout, go ahead Glacier Fire. Samoan Camp Desert. So the uncharged Makita is in the uh, lookout room and uh, did talk to Jack and got some two inch bugle head screws. Uh, there was one of those in the package of, uh, of Daniel's there. Break. Thanks a lot Dave, appreciate it. Toma Lookout is a very significant historic structure in, in lookout terms because it is one of four structures of this style that's left. These structures are old structures that are in extreme environments, so maintaining the structures is an important part of our job. Some lookouts are starting to get to a point where they're almost 100 years old, which is remarkable especially on a mountaintop like so many of these structures are. It's, it's amazing how much weather they take. With the few that we have left, the attempt to keep this place up as a functioning fire lookout, and if not, as a historic site in the history of land management and, and fire management is, to me, a wonderful endeavor to, to be a part of. At some point I realize that they're all going to be gone, whether that's 20 years or 200 years.
Kalispell Dispatch, Toma Lookout. Evening check-in. Have a good night. Toma. At night, when I'm back, I'm settled in. It's nearing bedtime, an hour or two away. And some nights, it's so beautiful. You lay down, you think you're tired, and then you look around, and there's all those stars coming out. It's certainly the most magnificent time of the day, where you know things are slow, things are quiet, and just the way things are lit up, both the night sky and the darkness. You know, some nights the moon is so bright that you can read by it in your bed. Nighttime's an awfully special time up here, yeah. Some nights, you might be watching lightning all night. The time it gets maybe a little bit disconcerting for me is when it sounds like your whole structure is gonna blow over or your windows are gonna break at once and you're just seeing a flash and hearing a bang that is pretty much simultaneous. It's quite an auditory and visual experience. It's nice when you're actually observing the strikes because not only do you have a job to do, but you can see where they're at. A significant amount of the lightning strikes that make a tree torch burn themselves out within five minutes. The weather contributes to all of my emotions at the lookout, and you kind of feel like you almost become the weather, where the weather excites you, the weather makes you sad, or a night that's very windy might be unsettling, you know, where you're huddled in here and, and it's hard to sleep, and it kind of pushes you around like it's pushing the structure around. Or if it's a real calm morning, you just feel at peace. It's very much a part of your everyday, where the weather does dictate so much of how my experience is, uh, is felt. Everything I need is going to be coming up on my back. I do have a water source. It's a mile and a quarter and a mile and a half from here, so it's two and a half, three mile round trip. And what I do is I have a frame pack up here and walk down to the stream. And early on the season, I dammed up the stream just a little bit more to get a nice basin of water where I could just dip my uh, three quart saucepan into it and fill up my QB that way. A QB is a 
five gallon water container, cardboard box with a plastic bladder inside it. And that's how we, as lookouts and firefighters, transport water. For me, going to the stream something, I'm out and about walking anyway at night and putting on that pack frame with a QB is no big deal and it's nice to work up a bit of a sweat and, and get your breath going a little bit. And It's also kind of rewarding getting your own water in that way. Where I tend to find most of my fires is not when I'm out there scanning, you know, ceaselessly. It's when I'm just sitting here and I pick up my head from a book or I, I stop hammering for a second and just take a good look around and say, oh, what's that? And grab the binoculars and check it out. In the field of firefighting, some places just don't use lookouts anymore, and that's fine. I understand they, they just choose to use other technologies. A lot of these technologies don't do a whole lot and they're so specialized that when my boss goes home at night, he or she knows that all it takes is a phone call from them if they're worried about something or they'll receive a phone call from me if there's something they need to know about. Whereas those technologies are not going to handle that. Because we're the quietest aspect of fire, we're not as present in the everyday for people in the valley. There's 500 of us in the west right now, and we're still here doing the work when people are thinking other things are going to replace us. The more time I have by myself, the more I love our world. The day, especially when, when fire danger is slow, is, is wide open. It is something I, I appreciate and enjoy, and it's an incredible way to spend the summer. When it comes time to go home and go to my life in the valley, I'm excited about it. You try and carry down what's beautiful and wonderful about this, this experience gives me a whole different look on, on the way I want to undertake and appreciate my life, you know, at home. Stand by for the morning fire weather forecast. Discussion. High pressure will build over the region today and Friday, supporting much warmer conditions with relatively light winds. Another Pacific trough of low pressure may begin to shift towards the fire district late Saturday and remain over the region into early next week. Today, partly cloudy, patchy fog in the morning, max temperature 70 to 80 valleys and 55 to 65 ridges. Minimum humidity 21 to 31 percent valleys and 31 to 41 percent ridges. 
20 foot winds, lower elevation, becoming upslope, up valley, 4 to 8 miles per hour in the afternoon. Ridgetop, southwest, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Haynes index 3, very low, LAL of 1, chance of wetting rain, 0%. Tonight, mostly clear. Max humidity, 93 to 100% valleys. This concludes morning fire weather forecast at 1018.